This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and in a surprise attack, Israel was invaded this morning by Palestinians. At about 5.30 in the morning, on what was a holiday, and we'll get to that in a second, Israelis were sleeping in. 2,500 Palestinian missiles were launched all at once, overwhelming the Iron Dome defenses, raining down on Israeli cities from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, all over the country, thousands injured, massive carnage all over Israel, and then Palestinian terrorist soldiers swept into Israel from the south, occupying a number of towns, taking hostages, killing soldiers, killing policemen, killing civilians. Uh, we assume that a lot of these hostages are going to be taken back to Gaza. So what does all this mean prophetically? That's what we're talking about today. We're going to give you a brief update about some of these things that are happening and then dive into what this means for Israeli-Saudi peace efforts, the covenant with the many, all these other issues. So hang on to your hats for an update. Unlike any we've had in recent years, Israel is at war again. Now we referenced that this was a holiday. In fact, this is quite a day because it is 50 years and one day October 6th, this is October 7th, since the Yom Kippur War, which also was a surprise attack back 50 years ago today. So a 1973. So this is a very interesting timing by uh, the Palestinian terrorists. Number two, it's a holiday as we had indicated to you. It is Shemat Torah, which is a holiday where they begin the new Torah cycle for the year. So most Israelis were sleeping. Most Israelis had the day off, soldiers included. Israel has, as of this morning, called up about 10,000 reservists to put them into action down in the south where the invasion happened. Uh, but these things are all very liquid and fluid. Things are not clear about what's happening yet. I'm sure by this evening, we'll have a better idea of what's happening. Uh, but in essence, rockets hit Israel severely. Many, many killed and injured all over the country. The Palestinian forces swept into southern Israel, overwhelming the small number of Israeli police and armed forces in that area, killing many of them, sweeping into Israeli towns in that area that are near the Gaza Strip, taking numerous hostages. And I think that's a big deal, maybe the focus of this little attack, and of course, killing many civilians and terrorizing people in those areas. Now, as I was hearing about this, it brought this verse to mind. Now, please understand, this verse is something that will happen at the midpoint of the uh, tribulation, 70th week of Daniel. This is not happening now. <laughs> this is not describing that. But it made me think about that. This is what it's going to feel like. This is what this verse is going to look like, except a hundred times greater scale. Let me read it to you. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city will be captured, and the houses plundered, and the women ravished, and half the city exiled. But the rest of the people will not be cut off from the city. But here's the big point. Then the Lord will go forth and fight against those nations as when he fights in the day of battle. So although these little skirmishes are happening now and that big invasion is going to happen in the future, and that was Zechariah 14, 2 and 3, by the way, although that's going to happen in the future, the Lord is going to return and that is what is really going to resolve the Israeli-Palestinian-Arab issue once and for all when Jesus comes back and fights for Israel. So the name of this Palestinian effort is the Al-Aqsa Storm, almost like Desert Storm. You notice that? Um, are they planning to sweep all the way into Jerusalem and take the Al-Aqsa Mosque? Well, of course not. But I think they're saying that in order that their 
honoring the Alaska moss. And we'll talk about that in a little bit when we get to the second half where we analyze this prophetically. Uh, but that's the name of it. Like I said, it happened on 50 years to the day from the Yom Kippur War. They're probably trying to play off that a little bit and gain sympathy from the other Arab nations around, hopefully that, thinking that they'll join in. But as of right now, as of 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the other Arab nations are silent on this attack by the Palestinians. But in some ways, this attack is also aimed at sending a message to Saudi Arabia about a peace deal with Israel that doesn't include the Palestinians. I would say that this is probably an indication that that deal was getting ready to happen and the Palestinians are protesting in the form of war. I mean, who protests in terms of war, taking captives, shooting rockets? But it's a very violent protest against the Saudis and against the Israelis for trying to come to terms without addressing the Palestinian issue. Because, you know, that's what has been going on recently. Saudi and Israel have been trying to come to an agreement, a normalization of relations, a adding Saudi to the Abraham Accords without dividing the land of Israel. And I think the Palestinians by this action are saying, hey, don't do that. We need to be included in an overall mega deal at this point. Don't just make a deal without us. And I'm absolutely convinced, although this is early in the day and it's hard to tell, I'm absolutely convinced that's what's going to happen. The Saudis and Israel are going to suspend talks for a while. They're going to delay things. And eventually, this will include the Palestinians. This effort will be successful politically and prophetically to get the land of Israel divided and to make the covenant with the many, a reality. I think, folks, we are right on the cusp of that covenant with the many. As you already know, if you follow this channel, we're looking at September 2024 and the UN Summit for the Future to be the site where the Israeli-Saudi deal is incorporated in a bigger deal that also includes all the nations, all the nations coming together and eventually, they're all going to come together against Israel. Now, what's really troubling about this whole issue is that a number of civilian hostages were taken by the Palestinians and are probably being returned to Gaza. This complicates the whole issue in a way that previous Israeli-Arab conflicts really haven't included. I'm not sure exactly how that's going to play out. But if you notice when we read from Zechariah 14, that's what happens there. Half of the city is taken captive into all nations. And again, here, even if, though they're just in these local, regional kibbutzes and cities in southern Israel, people have been taken hostage. Are they going to leverage them? You know that they are. That is exactly why I think this attack happened in this way, to suspend the Saudi-Israeli peace talks and to take captives so that they can use them for political purposes. Pray for those captives. Pray for the families that have been devastated by the rocket attacks. Pray for Israel because things are really heating up. Now, What's the status of the peace talks between Saudis and Israelis? Well, click right here and find out what Netanyahu and MBS, Mohammed bin Salman, have been talking about and where this was all going prior to this war. Because this will still be the framework around which a deal of the century, a covenant with the many, will be formulated. Till then... This is Nelson, and I'll see you there.